okay finally in this okay in this video we will finally define measures the way they should be defined in order to avoid any contradictions uh, and the approach is in fact to consider measures only when you define them to consider measures only on semi rings so on semi ring a measure it's a function which returns non negative numbers and which is additive so that's the one which satisfies such a property uh, the measure of the disjoint union is some of the measures on E of individual elements. Of course, A and B are elements of semi-ring, and also because semi-ring not always closed under union, we also have to require in this property that the disjoint union of the elements is also element of semi-ring. With the method of mathematical induction, this property can be simply extended, rather straightforward straightforwardly extended to a finitely many subsets or finitely many elements of semi-ring. I mean that if I have n chosen elements of a semi-ring, it also will be true for a measure on a semi-ring that the measure of a disjoint union will be some of the individual measures. However, uh, because uh, this is uh, a conclusion which we came to uh, with the method of mathematical induction, we have to require that every partial union, partial union for every m from 1 to n, is an element of semi ring. Again, it's only because the semi ring in general is not closed on the operation of union of sets. Now, you can't make the in infinity in this position, you can't take infinitely many subsets in this identity. You know, uh, you, you, can, you cannot do that. However, if you can, if you have a sequence of subsets, which are elements of semi-rings, such that the disjoint union, and they are pairwise disjoint, such that their union is also the element of semi-ring, if you have such a sequence, and if to such sequence you have the identity that the measure of this countable union equal to the sum of the individual measures, then the measure called a sigma additive measure. Uh, let me emphasize again, there are measures which are not sigma additive, so the measures which satisfy this, and by implication this, but which do not satisfy this. But if they do, we we'll call them sigma additive measures. Uh, two canonical examples are length and area. The length is a measure which is defined on a semi-ring of half open rectangles, and that's the definition of that. And area is the measure which is defined on semi-ring of half open rectangles uh, I'm not sure, it looks like I said here uh, rectangles, I meant intervals so length is a measure which is defined on a semi-ring of half open intervals with this formula and area is a measure which is defined on semi-ring of all half open rectangles and that's the formula for that uh, it is a relatively easy task to verify that both of these measures are in fact measures, so they additive, they satisfy this. And this is, it is warranted by the fact that the semi-ring of half open intervals, or semi-ring of half open rectangles, it is very simply structured collection of sets. And that's the advantage of introducing measures on semi-rings. Because semi-rings, in general, they are very, they have simple structure in comparison for in comparison with rings or, for instance, algebras, sigma rings or sigma algebras. Uh, I also observed that, that actually it can also be shown that these measures, two measures, length and area, they are in fact sigma additive measures on corresponding semi rings. And again, it's a relatively easy task to check that. Now, the main advantage, like I said before, uh, of introducing measures on semi rings is that on one hand, on one hand, semi rings have very simple structure, and so introducing such measures and checking their additivity and sometimes sigma additivity property is relatively easy task. On the other hand, just by defining measures on semi ring is enough to extend the measures from semi ring to a larger, richer structures of rings and algebras or sigma rings or sigma algebras in a rather standard way and our task next will be in a series of following videos or lectures to see this 
standard procedure how a measure can be extended from a semi-ring where you define it to a larger rooted structure of a ring, sigma ring, algebra or sigma algebra. The first result in this direction is this lemma, which, which has two statements, two parts. First one says a measure on a semi-ring S uniquely extends to, uh, look at this, minimal enveloping ring containing this S. Something we discussed with you in the, one of the preceding videos, this object. Uh, also it says that if the measure, this measure was sigma additive, then so will be the extension. So is the extension which would be here. This is a relatively simple result and its simplicity is, war is, going to, uh, is provided by the fact that this object has a nice structural description we discovered with you in the preceding video. So let's just look at the proof. Remember, our job is we have a measure on my semi ring, and our job is to provide an extension, which I will call M tilde, which is defined on this ring R of S, such that it is a measure, according to the definition we just went upwards, and it is also an extension of my original measure, meaning that it coincides with my original measure on the elements of semi ring. Uh, definition of, of this measure is suggested straightforwardly suggested by the fact by this fact that this minimal semi-ring enveloping S has this description, something we discovered with you earlier. And so it is quite quite natural now to make this suggestion. Uh, we will define this new M tilde measure on every element like this, on every element of my uh, of my ring R, like this. And you see I put the colon here to emphasize this is the definition. Right, we have two things to check. I mean, this one is obvious, so I'm going to check that. But there are other two things which we have to check, which are also relatively simple, but I'll show you some details of that. Uh, first thing to check is that this M tilde is in fact a measure. So for that, I'll take two elements of my ring. Huh? Each of such elements has a representation, has a disjoint union of, element of, of elements of my semi-ring. In general, it may be different elements of different number of such elements, finite elements though. Our job is to see the additivity. So here we go. I'll start with my... So we assume that these two, they pairwise disjoint. This is disjoint. Not necessarily to say pairwise, it's just two of them. So each of these AK and each of these BS will be pairwise disjoint then. So we look at the union, or measure of a union, of A and B. Now, we replace uh, A and B with the expressions for A and B in terms of the disjoint unions. Here it is, that's the replacement. Now, this huge thing, it is an element of my ring R, and we already given this representation of this element in terms of the elements of my semi-ring. So, we can use now the definition of M tilde, and by the definition of M tilde, this becomes just the original measure M of taken from every element A, K, and B, S. Now, individual sums here, again, by this definition, they just M tilde measures of A and B individually. That's how we see additivity of this measure, new measure M tilde. Now, we also have to address this extra requirement that this extension is unique. That's how we're going to do that. Assume that we have a second measure, M tilde 1, which is also leaves on this ring, and which is also an extension. So it coincides with my original one for every element of my semi-ring. And it's a measure. So look what it can say now, but we can say now. I'll take my new measure on the element of my ring, on this element. So each AK is the element of a semi-ring. Because it is a measure, it is a measure, so we can just split it like this, because it is a measure. It's one of the properties of the measure. We just mentioned this. Uh, each individual term here, because my measure coincides on, because this AK is the element of a semi-ring, on the semi-ring my new M tilde 1 measure coincides with my original one, so I can replace it with the measure of the original, original measure. And now this is just the definition of the M tilde measure. And that's how we finish it. And so we see that 
m tilde 1 coincides with m tilde. So we conclude like this, which means that this extension is unique. This extension is the unique extension of my measure from semi ring to a ring. Okay, so this concludes arguments which proves the part number one. Now I will address now part number two. So let's just assume that my original measure m is sigma additive. So now I will try to address this. Uh, let me just lift it up a little bit. Fix a sequence now of elements from my ring R. Each of them has this representation. Each of them has this representation via the elements of semi ring. It might be different elements. That's why I use two indices now. It might be different number of them for each individual AS. That's why we have this n sub s. Uh, each of them from the semi ring. And now we have to see that the measure is sigma additive. Again, this ring. It is ring now. It's a better, richer structure than my original semi ring, but still, it's not sigma additive ring. So, in general, the union of this is not necessarily member of this. We have to ask for this explicitly. So, we assume that this sequence will also satisfy this requirement. So, the disjoint, the pairwise disjoint, and the union actually another element of my ring. So, this element is in fact can be also represented as a finite disjoint union of some new elements of a semi-ring S and now we can see sigma additivity. In principle it's just, just almost a repetition of this argument but you have to be careful and the, you have to be careful because like I said this ring is not a semi-ring in general so you, you have this extra requirement and you have to deal with this requirement. So let's just do that. Uh, I'll start with my left hand side of the sigma additivity property so M tilde of this disjoint union I cannot put M tilde next to this AS individually, of course, but I, what I can do, just I just replace this union with, with this expression. Now, because this is a finite unions of elements of S, I can use the definition of the M tilde measure. And I come to this. Now, next I will write the identity, which I'll explain in a second. I will write this identity. And this one is the place where we use the fact that M, this original measure M, is sigma additive. Now, of course, in this identity, I use this identity between sets, DBL, given that all what is set here, given that all what is set in these two lines, this BL can be represented as this rather complex disjoint union. And remember, BL was the element of semi-ring, and these intersections are also the element of my semi-ring because A, S, K, element of a semi-ring, B, L is the element of a semi-ring, and we know that semi-ring is closed under intersection. Now, we have some element of my semi-ring, which is a countable union of some other elements of a semi-ring. We can use my sigma additivity property, and that's where I used it. No, I, I have to correct myself. I haven't used it yet. I just replaced my BL with the expression for BL, but at the in the next step I will use this sigma additivity, and that's, that's what I will have. Now, this triple sum, I can just put these sigma symbols in any order I wish, and I wish to take this second one and put it up here. So I want to keep this S is the outermost summation. Then the other two summations, L and K summation, it will be finite summation. It will be finite summation of the original M measure. I can use this to abbreviate this with the tilde measure of the finite disjoint union of these elements over K and over L. And that's what I'm going to put here. Well, I put here AS because, in fact, I use this another identity between sets, which says that actually this disjoint union, this disjoint union is, in fact, inside with AS, and the proof is finished.
Okay. Uh, this is the extra comments in relation to the extension of the measure from a semi-ring to a ring. And this was brought to my attention uh, in one of the discussions with the students, is that actually the, the argument which I presented is, uh, is missing one part of it, which is called the correctness of definition. And basically it says this, uh, if you have element of your minimal, semi, uh, minimal ring enveloping the semi-ring, so it's an element which has such a representation, uh, so it's a disjoint representation by the elements of a semi-ring. Of course, we define our extension measure, m tilde, like this, but there might be another representation for the same element of your extension via another collection of elements of your semi-ring, and the question is whether if I take this new representation, the tilde measure defined via this representation will deliver the same number. If it doesn't, then the definition is not correct, and it's, you can't study such a definition. Well, fortunately, the definition is correct, and that's, that's the content of this extra comments. So we will, in fact, show that, we will, in fact, show up with the question mark over it, that, in fact, both sums over this representation or over this representation will always deliver the same number. So the definition is, in fact, correct, and it is irrelevant which of those representation we take when we define my m tilde measure. So it is a very, very straightforward sort of argument. So we observe first that every AK set has this disjoint representation, and every BK set, BS set, has this disjoint representation. I I draw your attention to the fact that actually the because this is a semi-ring, the intersection of elements of semi-ring is another element of semi-ring. And now we can say this. So if I look at this left hand side and look at this right hand side, then my left hand side is if I replace this AK with this disjoint representation, this will be something like this. Because my measure M is additive, so this will be the sum of the individual measures here, so it will be something like this. For the right-hand side, you can do a similar argument. It's the S sum, and now you replace the BS with this representation. And then, using the additivity of the measure, I write the this is a sum of the individual measures, and you see the only difference is that the sum here, double sum here and the double sum here, they're just taken in different order. That's why the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. 